Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we've got another Thunderbolt 3 dock to take a look at. Today it is from Belkin. This is their Thunderbolt 3 Express dock and it has a bunch of ports here on the back that we'll go over in a second and it has power delivery up to 85 watts, but its Windows compatibility is limited. And I'll talk more about that when we get into the full review. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This does not come cheap. It's $350, but they do give you a one meter cable in the box. So relatively long by Thunderbolt standards standards, but uh, still a price premium. But this cable, at least if you're using a Mac, delivers power as well. So a single cable can get your monitor going, power your laptop. It'll work with the 15-inch and the 13-inch laptops and uh, give you all the ports that are on this device as well. So it's kind of convenient to get all of that stuff in a single package. We did look at a dock from CalDigit the other day that comes in at $299. Uh, that one comes with a half meter cable, but with the full meter cable, it costs the same as this dock. And there are some compatibility advantages to the CalDigit that I will talk about as we get further into the review here. So on the front of this dock, you've got a USB 3 port here. You have a headphone microphone combo jack there. On the back, you've got gigabit ethernet along with another audio output. So if you want a clean set of wires going out the back of the dock and nothing in the front, you can get your audio output through there. One note on the audio is that there is a separate audio controller in the dock. And I'm finding with this dock and every other one that I've tested, uh, the quality of the audio is not as good as what might be built into your Mac or high-end Windows PC. So uh, bear that in mind. If you are an audiophile, you might want to stick with the native audio on it. You've got two more USB 3.0 ports here. We'll be testing the speed of those in a minute. Got two Thunderbolt ports. One of these plugs into your computer. The other one allows you to chain in additional items. You can also plug in USB Type-C devices. And uh, you can uh, hook up a lot of different Thunderbolt things, but uh, external GPUs, eGPUs, or as Intel calls them, eGFX, uh, do not work through docks like this. They do need to be directly connected to a Thunderbolt port. And over here, you have a display port output for connecting up to a monitor. I did some testing earlier with my Mac and Windows PCs, and I was able to drive a 100 hertz 3840 by 1440 widescreen monitor along with a 4K display. Uh, what I did to get the second display was I hooked up a USB-C to HDMI adapter in the second Thunderbolt port there to get that display output. Uh, you could also plug in a display port adapter in there as well if you want uh, to get two displays going out of it. So it was able to uh, support all of that. It'll support two 4K displays simultaneously at 60 hertz or one 5K display or two other displays of lower resolution. Now, just like some of the other Thunderbolt 3 docks we've looked at, it has an enormous power supply here. 170 watts on this one. 85 watts are reserved for laptop charging, the rest for the peripherals and the dock itself. It will fully charge a MacBook Pro 15. This is the wattage requirement for this particular computer. It'll also, of course, work with the 13-inch MacBook Pro, but it doesn't charge Windows, and that is something the CalDigit device does do. It provides power to Windows laptops. This one does not. I was able to get all of the other ports working on Windows, but not the uh, power delivery, which is probably why Belkin on their listing on Amazon says it is Mac only, but the ports do indeed work with uh, Windows computers, but you won't get access to the power delivery. All right, so let's fire this thing up and see how it all works. I've got it connected to power. Uh, the display port connector here is hooked up to this monitor. I've got a Thunderbolt cable ready to go and a 15-inch MacBook Pro. This is the one that came out in uh, late 2016. And one thing to note is that you need to make sure your computer has Thunderbolt ports. If it does not look like this, on the Mac at least, uh, you don't have that. Even the little MacBook doesn't have Thunderbolt, even though it does have USB Type-C ports that look like this. So the MacBook Pro at this moment in time, 15 as well as the 13 are the only two compatible. The nice thing is that you can use any port on the Mac here. So I'm just going to pick this one, uh, plug this in, and we should hear the laptop start charging. There's the charging ding, and then uh, the display here should light up with uh, my login screen, and I can get to work on my Mac. So there we go. We're in. I can type in my password here, and 
uh, begin working on my Mac like it was a desktop and we're getting a charge here at the uh, full amount that the Mac expects from its power adapter and I've got it all going on here with a single cable. What I'm going to do now is connect up a drive to its USB port and we'll see how it performs. So let's take a look first at the solid state drive that I connected to the USB port in the back of the dock. Uh, this drive is capable of writing data at over 400 megabytes per second and reading data at around 500 megabytes per second. It is a very fast USB-C drive, but we're plugged into these USB 3 ports in the back here. And as you can see, the uh, performance we're getting out of the dock is good, but it is not as good as this drive is capable of doing if it was plugged into one of my USB-C ports directly. Another thing to note here on the dock is that all of the USB ports, as well as the gigabit ethernet and the audio for that matter, all share the same bus. So if one thing is dominating the, uh, the bus like this drive is right now, it's going to throttle speed to some of the other devices that are also plugged in. So if you're transferring a lot of files over the network at the same time, you're really hitting this uh, solid state drive through the USB port, you will see some things slow down. For most consumers, this is fine. But if you are an enthusiast that needs the maximum speed out of these ports, uh, you probably still want to use the ports that are built into your computer. But again, for everybody else, I think uh, it's more than adequate for transferring photos and other data. But if you've got that MacBook with only two ports on it and you want to preserve as much as possible, uh, you can chain the drive through the Thunderbolt port on the back here. So even though this is a USB-C drive, it will work with that extra Thunderbolt port there. So I'm just going to uh, swap out cables here. We're going to plug this orange one in. I'm going to connect this up to the Thunderbolt port in the back. I'm going to run that same test again, and now we should see uh, much better speeds here. So let me switch back over to uh, select our target drive. We've got the Samsung selected, and I'm going to start that again. And if we uh, switch over now, you can see we're getting the closer to native speed of what this drive is capable of. 470 megabytes per second writing now, and we're going to be seeing reads at uh, close to our 500 megabytes per second rating on this one. So you'll definitely get uh, more speed through that extra Thunderbolt port than you will through its native USB ports. Now, earlier today, I hooked up my gigabit Ethernet to the back of the dock here and got performance that I would expect to get, around 940 megabits per second, delivering data over my wired network. So all performed there as expected. And by and large, this is another good Thunderbolt 3 dock that works uh, just as well as some of the other ones that we have tested. Uh, the only issue with this one is power delivery to Windows computers. And that is, again, why I think Belkin is not uh, marketing this to Windows users right now. Uh, that CalDigit dock that we looked at recently performs about the same in all these tests that you just saw, but it does power Windows devices in addition to Mac computers. And I would suggest uh, checking out that review if you want to see some of the limitations you might run into with power delivery on Windows. But it does at least work on the CalDigit. It doesn't work here. But for Mac users, I think if you uh, look at the port selection on this one and compare it to the CalDigit, uh, either one should work for you. It was working fine with my MacBook Pro here. I plugged it in a single cable to get video and all the devices hooked up. And that is a, a pretty cool feature to have on your desk, especially if you're jumping back and forth between laptop and desktop mode. So that's going to do it for the Belkin Thunderbolt 3 dock. And this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, John Prawl, William Miller, and Charlie Walden. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.